Hello everyone, this is Jacob. And for another, Sophia. <laughs> for another podcast, I'm here with Sophia Mokamadova, and we're going to talk about a story that, that she wrote, um, and we're going to discuss it. Yep. So this is a short story that um, I wrote after a phone call with a mutual friend of Jacob and mine. I dreamt one night that I was in a village. The people of the village put shackles on my arms and legs. They told me that if I did not struggle against the shackles, did not remove them, they might one day come to accept me as one of them. But the shackles disturbed my sleep and the rust stained my arms and legs. I wandered the streets late into the night covered in, the, covered in sweat the color of blood and crying for help. My cries tormented the villagers. They were disgusted at my demonic form. They chased me out, screaming that I, at me that I must never return lest they slay me. I ran as far and as fast as I could until I came to a river. I saw a bridge and I crossed it. The people of the village chased me. They burned down the bridge behind me. I wept and through my tears I saw that the bridge was a funeral pyre and that on it were my chains and my name. The bridge turned to ash, and with it, it burned away a part of me. I stayed at, by the river for many days and wept, but my tears flowed into the river, and each tear made the, the river more impassable until finally neither boat nor bridge could ever be built to ferry me to the other side. I followed the river and found another village. The people of the village were wary of me. They told me that my skin disgusted them, but if I scraped it off, they might yet treat me as a lesser one of them. I scraped at my skin to remove it, but as I did, I bled, and the blood was revolting to them. They chased me up, screaming at me that I must never return, lest they slay me. I ran until I came to a desert. In the sands I saw a sphinx, and the face of the sphinx was my own, and as I watched, a part of me was erased by the sands. I sang a mournful song into the harsh winds, but my songs became a storm until I could no longer see in any direction for the sand. I let the winds carry me until I found another village. The people of the village told me that my shackles and my scars were pitiable to them. They told me that if I dressed like them and adopted their practices, they would yet accept me as one of them. I struggled to learn and to adapt myself to their ways, but my scars made their actions difficult to follow. I caught a glimpse of a verdant meadow in the distance, and I followed it. The people of the village told me that if I went to the meadow, I must never return, lest they slay me. I ran until I came to a cliff. The people of the village pursued me, screaming that my love for the meadow had torn me away from them. I did not know what was beyond the cliff, but I jumped. As I fell, I saw a vision of my body falling, broken into pieces on the rocks, and a part of me died on those rocks. I awoke alone in the meadow. I was incomplete, but I was happy, for I knew who I was. So you dreamt that. That's very... No, it's, it's not a dream, it's an allegory. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you didn't. I thought it's up here you've dreamt. I dream... Oh, that's the story. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's, a, it's an allegory for my life, and um, the three major changes that I have been through. Mm -hmm. in... And what were those? So the first village is um, my family. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where the chains and the scars <laughs> come from. And the second was um, my time among the Orthodox Jews, mm -hmm. um, who never treated me as an equal because my family was <laughs> uh, not practicing Jews. Mm -hmm. And but also because you were the Tamani Minhag, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, that, that's what the part about my skin <laughs> was, yeah. is that I was too Arab, and I was constantly getting bullied for being a quote-unquote donkey fucker <laughs> yeah. for being for being too brown too mm -hmm. arab and um then the third is uh my time in islam and it's, it's sort of the most positive mm -hmm. they don't add any new trauma although they they're the ones who chase you off the well, cliff they, they chase me off the cliff but so as everybody else has chased me off too <laughs> so I mean, so it's not significant that they're the only one. Who, I mean, at the end, that they chase you all and into kind of. I mean, is it suicide at the end, or it's not suicide? It's the loss of an identity, mm -hmm. but it isn't suicide. It's um, at each of these stages of my life, I have had to go through the process 
of losing everyone I knew mm -hmm. and being shunned and outcast and chased away yeah. with death threats all three times. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and that's why, like, part of me dies is because the death threats are there, mm -hmm. you know? And, like, it's very real. And, like, I don't know. When you lose a part of your identity, like, something that you've spent years of your life in, it really changes you, mm -hmm. you know? And the yeah. first time is not different than the third, <laughs> you know? Or the second is... It's, it's the same kind of trauma. But, like it says at the end, you know, I'm incomplete, but I'm happy. Good. Because, you know, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. And, and that incompleteness that? is part of me. Mm -hmm. You know, the incompleteness, the loss, and the chains, and the, like, this, all of that is part of who I am. Mm -hmm. But it isn't all of who I am. And uh, this channel is kind of a way of exploring <laughs> mm -hmm. who I am, like, with all of the, the different traumas that I've been through. Cool. That's interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you.